Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen news. Today, looking at a sneak peek of the Prowler interior, which hopefully is coming 3.8, the 3.6 Alpha roadmap updates, some new shield effects, and CitizenCon 2019 tickets go on sale next week. Let's start with the blurb from the newsletter. The latest quality patch, Alpha 3.6, is currently in the capable hands of the Eva Carti test group. Their efforts ensure the patch will reach the PU, the persistent universe, with the many diabolical bugs and issues thoroughly obliterated. Now, that statement isn't necessarily true. We have very, very buggy times in the PTU, wider PTU, and even live builds as 3.5 and 3.5.1 do prove. Uh, they have our gratitude for more on the new features and improvements coming in Alpha 3.6 straight from the devs and Chris Roberts himself. Be sure to check out the latest quarterly series, Pillar Talk. There's also, um, I believe next week, Todd Pappy in Star Citizen Live is going to be talking about the features of 3.6 in more detail. And if you're wondering when 3.6 is going to go to wider PTU and be live, um, expect it between now and the end of June to get more and more PTU waves out to more and more people. We could have a at least first wave wider PTU uh, as early as Monday, based on how many of those bugs do get smashed to bits, uh, as they said earlier. Uh, and then, yeah, for the end of the month, expect a... PTU for everyone or a live build based on whether or not they can get uh, everything fixed for them. Also in that newsletter we saw some of the earlier work on the Prowler interior in a sneak peek video uh, from that newsletter. That was weird. There was actually a video rather than just a screenshot. I'm slowly starting to like the idea of the Prowler a bit more. Obviously it's early stages at the moment but I am quite excited. You can find the newsletter and all the links of everything that we discussed down below in the description and comments. CitizenCon 2949 Wave 1 tickets will be on sale next week. Calling all explorers, CitizenCon 2949 approaches, and we could not be more excited to celebrate Star Citizen and its community together in Manchester, England, Saturday the 23rd of November at Manchester Central Convention Complex. Next week, we'll kick off Wave 1 of ticket sales alongside an update to our CitizenCon website providing additional information about this year's event. There's going to be four lots of 125 tickets sold in this first wave on Thursday the 27th at 6pm UTC. Concierge and subscribers will get access to that first wave of 125 uh, and then another 125 at 10pm on the same day, again for concierge and subscribers. And then uh, the next day, the 28th of June, Friday at 6pm UTC again. All backers will have access to 125 tickets in a lot uh, and then at 10 p.m. on the same day another 125 tickets for a total of 500. They look like they will be available via the CitizenCon website linked below which is robertspaceindustries.com forward slash CitizenCon. We should also get some new details of the event at that time. I suspect that there will be other waves in the future if they don't sell the, all of the tickets. Obviously they want to sell all those tickets. It's also possible there could be more tickets in the future too. 500 is actually quite small, but also could make sense if they're going to be focusing on streaming for the most part. And I believe half the venue that they're using, that convention center, is booked out by a dentist conference. <laughs> so, um, so that could be like they're just using half of it this year and they're, they're growing in size if they need to. But I don't see the need for physical ticket sales for CitizenCon to be huge. It is largely, for the most part, watched more than visited. Also, this year seems to have just one ticket type, which is an improvement in my opinion. I believe last year you couldn't use store credit to buy tickets, so bear that in mind if you are after one. But I'm certainly much happier about no elitist tickets for people that are super concierge getting, well, you can buy this ticket, it takes times the price, and it gives you access to a special bar, and you can touch Chris Roberts's face. That, that didn't happen. That was a, an extreme example um, that didn't happen. Roadmap updates. There's been a good amount of features completed for 3.6 this week. Uh, rest stop exterior variants, the P72 Archimedes and P52 Merlin rework, the Maxox neutron repeaters, the ship weapon, uh, the Klaus and Warner Lumen V uh, SMG, the bearing S38 pistol. There are still seven features left to complete for 3.6's initial release and another two that have been pushed to 3.6.x uh, that are also now just in that sort of like branch uh, and on the roadmap. Those two features that we know are coming later are ship rentals and the 890 jump, which both saw some progress this week in the in that roadmap. 
back to the initial 3.6 release though. Uh, weapon attachments, the Vanguard Warden rework and distribution and ecosystem improvements are dangerously close to being cut from the initial release in my opinion. They are at 60, 43 and 35% each completed by task um, respectively and have a lot of other tasks to complete. Hopefully they won't get pushed to a 3.6 build. It's possible that we could see delays to a 3.6 live build but they're potentially on the right tracks to get there still other than those they still have to get the new shield tech framework in and then start on performance optimization for the patch which is normally done at the very end talking about the new shields in 3.6 or at least the tech behind them typically i avoid evocardi leaks at the moment as i'm an evocardi member but when cig employees comment on them i think that moves them far enough into public domain when they talk about specific ones anyway uh, 3.6 is getting the framework for some new shield tech but not the full thing currently cig's interiori uh, the principal ship technical artist responded to a clip of some of the new shield effects in 3.6. So 3.6 is getting the framework for some of that new shield tech, the sign distance field stuff and improvements, but not the full thing currently. Uh, he said, hi, just wanted to mention that this isn't the new signed distance field tech just yet. The old bubble effect visual was tweaked for 3.6, but we're working on FDS, sign distance field, for the next release. Instead of a 2D texture effect, the FDS will cause particles to flow over it. it looks amazing for hits, re-entry and cloudy turbulence visuals. Another question was asked to clarify the sign distance field is what you're calling the visuals where the shield effects better follow the exterior of the ship rather than a bubble. And then he responded, imagine an invisible field that wraps the hull but is pushed out a bit as the sign distance field. Now add a projectile that when it collides causes particles to spew out. The visual is particles following the contours of the sign distance field. So it appears that the initial 3.6 release um, we will be getting some improved effects for shields but then at a later stage the finished product for the sign distance field tech which particle based shields and um, all that sort of jazz they're sort of like that's coming later. They're laying the framework for that in 3.6's initial release. Let's take a quick look at uh, Star Citizen Live dressing the scene. They looked at props and placing them in game to create an enhanced gameplay area and scenes. They made a crime scene in the back alley of Area 18 on Arc Corp. They can edit and drop in uh, props or prefabs straight into an environment at real time. And this can also um, be just a simple copy paste. They can then just move these items around, scale them up and down um, and put them wherever they want. Objects that aren't in view or are behind doors are then culled out so that the client performs better. But object container streaming allows them to be quickly physicalized and re sort of like materialize when they come back into view. A large amount of props are created to help dress areas and make believable environments. Some items will be used for one area. Others might see variants or reuse but they want to avoid repetition uh, where not appropriate. Groups of props are dropped into kits that allow them to be quickly searched for and can be used to very easily build out themed zones or when they need a particular set of props. For example, in the crime scene that they were making, uh, they used a kit to grab body bags and uh, various associated props and placeables. So um, blood spatter, uh, evidence bags, lots of little pieces. The use of these really transforms an area. In Inside Star Citizen, they talked about some uh, other bits and bobs. They are moving transit systems, uh, such as trains and public transport, to looped tracks. So we'll also see more trains and buses on those loops. Basically, we won't have to be waiting um, too long for a train or a bus or whatever to come along to move us around from area to area. The time for travel between those areas is sort of like what they want to, to have there, not the waiting to go to the area. Ship damage and visuals for that are now persistent, even to debris and sections of destroyed ships. So you can write your name in weapon damage with your SMG or your actual ship in the side of a hull of another ship if you wanted to. And uh, obviously the little bits there um, of the ship, even large debris, small debris, that will all persist at least for much longer. Obviously they want a system in place where uh, it removes stuff after a certain amount of time and obviously service restart all the time. Uh, the S38 ballistic pistol is medium range and semi-auto medium rate of fire. It's also pretty accurate. Uh, the Lumen SMG is a 
five shot burst laser weapon. They have been doing some early work on having tinted dust and effects based on the surface materials of a planet or moon and very early stages at the moment. And that's it for this week's news. I'm going to be looking to grab a CitizenCon ticket myself, but are you going to be trying to grab one or are you happy to watch it uh, on the live stream? I actually think for content creators, it might be better to just um, watch it on live stream because I want to be creating news on these events. Pow, pow, pow. Um, but I, I do want to go to CitizenCon when it's in the UK, admittedly. I am very excited. What do you think we'll see at this year's CitizenCon? Also, do you think we'll see 3.6 going live by the end of June? Or do you just think we'll see a PTU for everyone? Are you happy with the progress it's making? Are you disappointed by some of the stuff that got pushed back last week? Or the fact that the 890 Jump and Ship Rentals aren't going to be in the initial release? But obviously that they will be in the 3.6 branch at some point. Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Every month we have a ship giveaway for June. We have an Origin 890 Jump, the massive luxury ship that is a huge, huge sort of like capital luxury ship. It's been donated by Odyssey Interstellar, a friendly industrial expansionist organization in Star Citizen that focus on mining, trading, industry, exploration, research, and infrastructure. In short, commerce is their goal. They run regular weekly events in-game now. Please check them out if you are looking for an org to join. Links down below. There are a couple of services I shield for as well that you might find useful. If you're looking for a VPN, then check out NordVPN. I use it for security privacy and more. It has massive advantages over free VPNs. And if you use the code BoardGamer, you get up to 75% off your subscription. Boom! Also, there is Shadow Cloud Gaming. This is an alternative to having your own or upgrading your gaming rig on PC. It leverages the power of the internet and your own Shadow server that emulates a high-spec Windows 10 PC, so you can play up to 144Hz 4K anywhere with an old PC, laptop, smartphone, or even tablet. Freedom to play anywhere. The internet is good enough anyway. And it works really well with Star Citizen and all the games that I play. And is constantly updated and even improved with new hardware. Again, use the code BoardGamer for discount. Links below to all of that jazz. Thank you to all that support the channel through Patreon, the YouTube join button, donations, subscribe star, as well as anyone that just generally subscribes, likes, comments, and shares my content. Dings that bell. Ding, ding. If you feel so inclined, you can find uh, links to all of that down below. A special thank you, though, to my VIP producers this month, Dalamars, Catastrous, Raz, Gear Khan, General Ventador, Robert Johnson, and Andy Green, who have given well beyond the norm in support for the channel. I know a load of other people have, but I can't name them all. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the verse.